Hey guys, I'm the Nomad Producer with StartProducingMusic.com and before we dive in and learn about compressor types, I want to let you know that my course Start Producing Music is soon going to be relaunched. I want to invite you to sign up today to the email list and get exclusive content, special discounts and to know when the course is actually going to be launched. This course covers everything you need to know in order to become a music producer. So make sure you go into StartProducingMusic.com, sign up today and now without further ado, Let's learn about compressor types. The last thing to get familiar with before we sum up the compression topic is the various types of compressors. Since some are not as intuitive as others, I will show and explain how to use a few and hopefully save you some confusion when you encounter them yourself. Digital compressors can usually be fully tweaked. They are also very clean, making them a good tool for anything practically. The compressor I used in the demonstrations in the prior segment is my DAW's stock plugin, but there are many third-party plugins that have some very useful features incorporated. FET stands for Field Effect Transistor. These compressors can reach very fast attack times because of their transistor circuitry and can be used for anything from vocals, bass, room mics, or anything else that calls for fast and clean attack settings. The 1176 is the most famous FET compressor and you will probably come across many emulations of this classic mixing tool. The 1176 has a fixed threshold level, so in order to start compressing you need to push the sources level with the input knob into the threshold and then balance the volume with the output knob. The 1176's attack ranges from 20 microseconds to 800 microseconds. The release ranges from 50 milliseconds to 1.1 seconds and an important thing to know is that the attack and release parameters are counterintuitive. The highest number represents the fastest attack and the lowest number represents the slowest. The last cool feature of the 1176 is the all buttons in mode, also known as British mode. By default, when one ratio is chosen on the compressor, the ratio chosen before is deselected. But British engineers discovered that when all the ratios are pushed in, the compressor's reaction is mild distortion and extreme attack and release times. This gives a lot of character and can be used to give a track an extra pop of excitement. Optical compressors have an interesting design. The audio going through the compressor passes through a light element that lights up and down as the input level changes. Surrounding the element, there's an optical cell that attenuates the audio as the light grows stronger. These compressors have slow attack and release times and are considered soft and warm. Optical compressors are good for sources that need slow attenuation like certain vocals, bass, or string sections. The LA-2A is the most famous compressor and also has many emulations you will surely come across. The LA-2A has two knobs, peak reduction, which acts like a threshold knob, and gain, which is the output level. Generally speaking, the LA-2A has a softeny, an average ratio of 4 to 1, average attack of 10 milliseconds, and two release stages. 50% of the release happens around 60 milliseconds, and the second 50% can take between 1 to 15 seconds. But all these parameters I just mentioned actually fluctuate according to the audio coming through the compressor. So as you can see, although it is very simple to use, the LA-2A is actually a very complex and musical compressor. Tube compressors have tubes in their circuit and create the desired warmth that is considered the signature tube sound. These compressors will be great for certain vocals, string section, and any source material that can use tube tones. The most famous compressor in this category is probably the Fairchild which has 20 tubes in it. This compressor has an input knob, a threshold knob, and what the designer called time constants, which are different combinations of attack and release parameters. Attack times will range from 200 to 800 microseconds, and release times will range from 300 microseconds to 25 seconds in extreme cases. If you purchase an emulation of the Fairchild compressor, make sure you read the manual since this compressor is very unique and has a lot to offer. VCA stands for Voltage Controlled Amplifier. The way these compressors are built gives them the ability to be both very fast and slow. Because of this flexibility, they are often used on the master bus or on drums, with the best example being the SSL bus compressor, which gives a wide variety of attack and release times. A different famous VCA compressor is the DBX160, which is actually very limiting in terms of options. Since the SSL is more flexible, it will oftentimes be used on the master bus, whereas the DBX is a classic punch enhancer for drums because of its very fast and aggressive attack. 
multiband compressors are actually multiple compressors in one unit that are divided across the frequency range. This gives us the option to compress specific ranges differently or to compress only one specific range instead of the whole track. There are analog multiband compressors, but they aren't as commonly emulated, so you'll mostly see digital compressors like the Waves C4 or C6 and the FabFilter Pro MB. If you have any of these emulations, go ahead and experiment with them. Having a wide variety gives you a lot of creative freedom, but also a lot to learn. The way I suggest you go about learning different types of compressors is to choose one compressor and try using only that one to reach your compression goals. Do that at least for a while and learn their capabilities both as a dynamic tool and as an emotional enhancer. After a few days or a week of consistent use, change to a different compressor and learn that one thoroughly. Doing this will force you to experiment and know your tools in greater depth than just randomly picking a few and working with them.